So as a follow-up to the last video where we tested some extension cords, I thought it would be interesting to test some 14-2 wiring, basically standard house wiring that's found in most homes in North America. So what I've done is I prepared a piece of that standard wiring and the way I prepared it is I twisted, I bent the ends over and twisted them together so that there would be a good thick connection to attach the welder terminals to and so that we wouldn't get any melting on the connection itself. For the other end of the wire, what I'm going to do is join the two wires together with a MAR connector or a wire nut as some people call them. And to do that properly, what you should do is twist the ends of the wires together before putting the connector on them, like that. So now they're twisted together nicely. You can put the connector on them, like that. I once lived in a house where none of the wires seem to be twisted together and maybe we'll test that later and see if it makes any difference and I would think the twisting makes a significantly better connection because there's already a good connection between the two wires before you put the nut on. So with the wire nut in place what we'll do is we'll attach it to the welder just stick it into the welder rod holder and tighten that up and then we'll attach the other end to the welder ground clamp here we go that's probably good enough hopefully that's a good connection and um, okay we're ready to do some testing and if I were a betting man I would think this 15 amp rated cable probably should go to about 50 amps before the plastic starts melting and we'll have to see it is a blistering hot day about 30 degrees Celsius um, so well into the above 90s in Fahrenheit so it's already very hot, um, which is already a good start. So it'll just be interesting to see what happens. It'll also be interesting to see if the cable fails before the wire nut itself fails. So let's get ready to crank it up and see what happens. Okay, so we're ready to go. I've set up a voltmeter and an ammeter so we can see what's happening and I'll crank up the current first to about 15 amps and you can see we're at about 0.35 volts across the the wire so that probably means we're somewhere around 5 watts being dissipated and um, yeah no sign of warmth anywhere so let's crank it up to 20 amps I can just begin to feel the wire getting warm but not uncomfortably so it's just barely noticeable so let's crank it up now to 30 amps there we go we got about 0.7 of a volt across the whole thing so that amounts to just over 20 watts being dissipated the mar connector is barely warm the wires interestingly well as you'd expect are warmer in the part that's under the outer cladding where they're closer together although this is getting quite warm here and here still surviving okay let's try 40 amps 
So at 40 amps, we've almost got one volt across the wire. So that means we've essentially got 40 watts being dissipated in the short length of wire, and it's certainly getting warm. You could certainly imagine in a bundle of wires or in the wires in the wall in between insulation, it would be uncomfortably hot. Mark connector, probably the coolest of everything around here. Although the wires here are quite warm, so maybe that's heat that's coming from inside the connector and going out. Let's try 50 amps. So we get about 1.4 volts across the system. So probably about 70 watts or so. When you think about it, 70 watts in this little piece of wire is quite a lot. And yes, it's really getting warm now. In fact, I can't hold on to it much longer than that. How's the MAR connector? It's, it's okay. We'll just give it a little bit of time at that voltage. And we're really closing in on one and a half volts now, probably as the copper gets warmer and more resistive. And just like the extension cord, it's a bit of a runaway effect because the more resistive it gets, the more heat it dissipates, the hotter it gets, and then it gets even more resistant. Oh yeah, that's getting really hot now. But so far, none of the cladding is coming off. None of the insulation is coming off. Well, let's try cranking it up some more. We're now at 60 amps, four times the rating of the wire, or I should say the ampacity of the wire. And even though it's rated at 15 amps, you're not actually supposed to put more than 12 amps continuous through it. This is certainly, oh yeah, this is getting really hot, but still so far not coming apart. Just like the extension cords, I'm quite impressed. How's the connector? It's certainly warm. Oh, and the wire there is really too hot to touch. I'm also beginning to smell hot plastic. I just heard something. Oh, look at that. It's beginning to break down right here. Maybe I should use the other end of this. So here we go. So somewhere around 60 amps, this household wiring is beginning to melt. Oh, you can see it over here too. How's the MAR connector? The MAR connector surviving. It's too hot to touch. So its plastic is clearly more heat resistant than the insulation on the cable. And you would hope it is that way. In fact, it's finding it's the plastic is showing no sign of getting any softer. Maybe we'll crank it up a little bit more. Can we get it to 70? Yes. That's actually as far as my setup in its current configuration will do, even though the, the welder in an uncontrolled setup will do apparently 240 amps. Well, it's certainly smoking. So that's what you would get if you hooked household wiring like this to a load that is way too big with a breaker that is way too big. And maybe what we should do at this point is turn off the control load and hook it into the welder and see what happens. Although it may be too late. Yeah, this is not that hot. So we've got a short 
somewhere in here. I would have liked to test the MAR connector itself. We'll do that separately. Let's see what happens if the breakers don't trip and you get a couple of hundred amps through 14.2. Here goes. A lot less dramatic than the extension cord test. I guess that's what you would hope because this should be a lot more robust wire and it clearly is. So let's see what happened under the wire nut and this is impressive. I don't know if you can see it. The wire nut is in what looks like perfect condition. The end of the wire is slightly discolored towards the insulation but at the very end where there should be the least amount of current flowing, it's almost perfect copper. So this is actually quite an impressive connection, which probably experienced 60 amps way beyond what should ever be going through here. So wire nuts are actually surprisingly good, and perhaps you wouldn't think so based on some of the things various YouTube channels are saying and advocating newer, fancier connectors. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.